Warning, the following podcast contains strong language which some listeners may find offensive. The Untitled Wrestling Podcast is on all the usual social media outlets. Do your bit to support us on Facebook and YouTube at Untitled Wrestling Podcast, Twitter, Twitch and Discord at Untitled Rest Pod. Give us a like, share, subscribe and join our flourishing community of not just wrestling fans, but gamers, podcasters, musicians and more. They said NXT was dead. NXT UK isn't though, is it, lads? Woo! Long live NXT UK. Long live NXT UK. <laughs> um, welcome to the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. NXT might be going through the through some changes, but NXT UK still old, reliable, still the same, still old, Put faithful. Out, putting out a takeover worthy show, in my opinion. Yes, boy. With two matches on there in particular that could have fucking war fans would take over. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, before we get into it. Would you like to uh, give us some tidbits for today, Troy? Fucking yes, mate. Hey, the room you've got some. Got a couple. Got a couple lined up, especially. Um, on this day uh, in wrestling, uh, birthdays, uh, friend of the podcast, Sergeant Slaughter in 1948. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Just bought Funko Viz off at of WWE.com for £3.50. Oh, bargain. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Jazz, born in 1973. And the great Carly, born in 1972. Whoop, whoop. Um, a couple of deaths as well uh, on this day, unfortunately. In 2010, we lost Luna Vacom. And also, actually, no, that was that was the only one of, of major note, unless I've missed something else. But yeah, uh, that was the one that stood out. Uh, and then we've got a pay-per-view because it's because it's the hottest. Hottest party of the summer and, and all that shtick. We're going to go to 2000 where WWF presents SummerSlam. Uh, opening match, six-man tag. Bull Buchanan, Stephen Richards and the Good Father, a.k.a. Right to Censor, versus Grandmaster Sex A, Rikishi and Scotty Too Hotty. Uh, then we had X-Pac defeating Rodog by pin. Uh, China and Eddie Guerrero versus Trish Stratus and Val Venus. Um title change there uh eddie guerrero became the new intercontinental champion um jerry lawler versus taz uh steve blackman uh sorry jerry lawler defeated taz there i should note defeated taz uh the lethal weapon steve blackman defeated shame at man um to become the new hardcore champion chris ben- yeah chris benoit defeated chris jericho uh, in a two out of three falls match now that sounds decent on card, on paper, but they went for thirteen minutes. Two out of three falls match, fucking should be huge. Thirteen minutes. I feel like I remember that being really good because it was just really hard hitting. Okay. Also, also lest we forget the two out of three falls match from NXT Takeover, Sami Zayn versus Cesaro. Oh, for, where, the oh. First, where the first two falls were in the first minute. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, fair enough. There is that. There is that. <laughs> um. Edge and Christian uh, defeated Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy uh, and Bubba Ray Dudley and Devon Dudley. The triple threat TLC tag team match for the WWF tag team titles uh, and they retained. That was a banger. Um, the Cats defeated Terry in a stink face match Don't stipulation. Fuck me, dead. Different time. <laughs> uh, the Undertaker and Kane drew in a no contest. In under six, uh, in under seven minutes, because <laughs> yeah, reasons. The, that was the one where Undertaker unmasked Kane and Kane just ran away. Ah, uh, that would explain why it was less than seven minutes. So he it shit himself. Shit. <laughs> uh, and yeah. finally, in a triple threat for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship, The Rock retained by defeating Kurt Angle and Triple H. That sounds all right. Nice. Yes. I do remember that being quite good. Yeah. Uh, that's all your tidbits. I'm just going to do today. I ain't faffing about. Nice. Well, there's actually a UK wrestling show. Is it now? Being as NXT UK and all, might as well stick with that. Uh, is, it, well, is, it the old pro- is it the old progress? It's progress chapter 75. These violent delights have violent ends. Go on. Um, 
in the opening match, the grizzled young veterans. I would do it properly. Soon! I'd, I'd do it properly, but my voice is a bit ropey to the end. I don't want Seeing as we've got possibly two hours of podcasting to do, I don't want to just like <laughs> blow me load in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> I'd do it, but I'd never do it any justice. <laughs> um, yeah. They defeated Connor Mills and Maverick Mayhew. Don't know who they are. No. Um, Millie McKenzie won a five way women's tight, ty- ty- well, not women's title match, women's match against Candy Floss, Chikara, not Chikara. Um, no, Chakara. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chakara. <laughs> Charlie Morgan and Laura DiMatteo. A lot of it. Mm. A lot of alumni NXT from NXT UK there. Yeah, man. Um, Chris Brooks and Timothy Thatcher defeated uh, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis, a.k.a. Aussie Open. I don't know if yeah, yeah. Thatcher was just like an impromptu member of the uh, Calamari Catch Crew there or not. Um, <laughs> Calamari Catch Crew? Yeah, it's because uh, it's because Jonathan Gresham's in it and he's the octopus. Fuck off. <laughs> and he... Uh, they do, they do all like the, the, the catch, catch things. Yeah. Nice. Uh, they also have Kid Like Us. So. Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> oh, yes. This this match sounds random as fuck. Doug Williams and Walter defeated Pete Dunne and Trent Seven. <laughs> what? Yeah, in just over 10 minutes. <laughs> Hang on, Doug Williams and Walter? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Damn. Damn, mate. <laughs> I think, if I'm guessing, this was around the time that Walter and Pete Dunne were feuding over the Progress title. Okay. And Doug Williams and Trent Seven were feuding over the Atlas title. Right, right, right. Um, I uh, right. Tyler Bate. You what? Sorry, you cut out there. Oh, sorry. Tyler Bates defeated Mark Haskins. Oh, hello. That that sounds like it would have been a little banger. Yeah, man. And uh, in the main event, the farewell match from Progress. I think we both these guys farewell match. Will Ospreay defeated Jimmy Havoc. In a two out of three falls, no DQ match. Oh. So this would have been before Osprey went to Japan and Havoc it went was, to AEW? I'm guessing so. I think so. Osprey was already in Japan because he right. came back over for it. Okay. Um, it was before Havoc went to AEW. Well, before Havoc went to AEW, hmm. but it was around the time that NXT UK had just been announced. And obviously, Jimmy Havoc was. The yeah. Most, uh, yeah. <laughs> And also progress had that partnership with WWE. So mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, we don't want Jimmy Havoc. He, he does nasty things like he's, dudes. He's a madman. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sweet. That sounds so, right, yeah. huh? I, I remember that match, that uh, two out three fours match being fucking insane. <laughs> but nice. Might be worth checking out that one. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. And I don't think there's any other. There's that Field of Honor one Aaron put on our. Um, <laughs> On our oh, Christ, Twitter. yeah, that looks absolutely massive. That card, yeah, just to run through that very quick. Uh, opening match was, um, well, in a dark match, Taylor Hendricks defeated Deonna Perazzo. Opening match was Kashida versus Dalton Castle. Wow, Bobby Fish defended the ROH World, uh, World Television title against Evil. Uh, Michael El- Elgin defended the IWGP Intercontinental title against Donovan Dijak. Donovan Dijak, aka, AKA T Bar, um, SCU or the Addiction as they were called in Ring of Honor. Christopher Daniels and R- Frankie Kazarian defended the tag team titles in a gauntlet match against the Briscoe Brothers, War Machine, Kenny King and Rhett Titus, Gado and Toro Yano, Cheeseburger and Will Ferreira, and Keith Lee and Shane Taylor. Jesus, wet. Um, <laughs> Hangman Page, the Young Bucks, and Yujiro Takahashi defeated ACH, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, and Leo Shin in eight-man tag. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly defeated Katsuyoro Shibata and Adam Colbebe, the man of the hour himself, <laughs> not to be confused with Leo Rush, um, <laughs> defended his Ring of Honor title in a four-corner survival match against Jay Lethal, Tetsuya Naito, and podcast favourite Hiroshi Tanahashi. Go Ace! Go Ace! <laughs> So yeah, a couple of bang, a couple of banging events there. Um, and on a personal note, I'd like to recommend people go check out uh, the Battle of Los, Los Angeles 2018 uh, by PWG because that is literally just NXT versus AEW versus New Japan three matches from about three years ago, and it's fucking wild. Um, yeah, man. I I was watching it and every match uh, earlier and every match was like, how the fuck did I not know this happened? <laughs> um. 
but yeah, definitely recommend that. Anyway, I'm not it's about PWG as much as I could. We're so, it's so about NXT UK, and oh boy, oh boy, what a boy. fucking what a show we had. Uh, opens up with Eva Valkyrie versus Ginny in a no DQ match um, or a street fight or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, Joseph Connors is in a shark cage on the stage. Um, so on on her entrance, uh, Ginny attacks Aoife. Uh, Aoife manages to fight her off and throw Joseph Connors into the cage. And uh, I've got to say, big, big respect to Joseph Connors. He did his job perfectly in this match. He was, oh, fucking, he was awesome. He was so good. Sh- shouting at the ref whenever Aoife Valkyrie was like turning yeah. the tables on Ginny saying she was cheating. He, uh, he was as much a part of this match as Ginny and Valkyrie were, just in what he was didn't... saying, his mannerisms, but he, but he didn't overshadow it. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was great. He, he's he's very, very, very good. I, I do like him in this sort of like shitbag manager role for Ginny. Mm. But like, I like I like the partnership of those two anyway. It's just, it seems yeah. to really work. Yeah. Um, early on in the match, Aoife just controls Ginny, works over, uh, Ginny works over Aoife's back. And her leg, both go after the legs as well. Aoife just rams Ginny into the barricade at one point and they start brawling all over the place. Um, Aoife throws Ginny into the tech area and absolutely wails on her with a fucking laptop. Fucking laptop. (laughs) I I don't know how much of like the screams Ginny were given were real and how much were just acting because it it sounded upsetting. (laughs) Fucking (laughs) looked upsetting. And yeah, then Aoife just kicks the fuck out of Ginny's leg and ribs. Um, Do you see when it was like the trash bag or something that she dumped at her, and G- Ginny threw a cup at her, and Valkyrie like flinched. Andy yeah. Shepard's like, "Oh, you see, we're throwing a cup." It's like, "Oh, yeah. Jimmy it's like, you see I don't think now? that's going to affect her." Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> himself. It's, it's going to take more than that. <laughs> Good old Andy Shepard, friend of the podcast. Um, <laughs> there, there was a really cool spot where uh, Valkyrie gets the table and Joseph Connors is going absolutely ballistic in the cage. Yeah, yeah. So, ref, ref. Put an end to this. Stop it, ref. Stop it, ref. <laughs> um, and then that, that kind of like is the focal point of the match for a good like minute or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of sort of like teased, like one of them's going. Uh, really cool spot. I've just put Ginny and Aoife recreate Mufasa's death in the Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> like clawing at uh, Aoife's arms and Aoife yeah, nearly yeah. falls through. Manages holding on get, by like fingertips. <laughs> yeah, manages to get off the apron, um, and then she sets uh, hits a suplex on Ginny on the floor. Sets up for a Perry Pattaya through the table, with misses, and just like that looked upsetting. Mm. The way she landed on her knee as well. There was two two moments in this match where like Eva could have like really hurt herself. Yeah, and I I don't know how she didn't. <laughs> mm. um, Ginny hits a really good looking Liger kick for a two count. Yeah. Um, and then she tries to pilmanize the ankle, but Eva fights out, uh, reverses a superplex into a sunset bomb, and like a knee kind of buckles. Yeah. Uh, that, that was the other spot. And it was really kind of, for me, it was a little bit uncomfortable because I remember that obviously when Seth Rollins did it to oh, Kane. Oh, God, and Kane, like, yeah, on that house show. Destroyed his knee. Yeah. Um, yeah. And her knee was at the same angle as Seth as well. I was just like, oh. Mm-hmm. No. I thought something um, might have gone wrong there as well. I just as you say, having flashbacks from that Seth and Kane match, I just thought, yeah. oh, I've seen this before, and it never ends well. It was because <laughs> she kind of like stuttered as she like landed hmm. as well, she sold it. Um, but it, it looks like it was just a kayfabe thing. But the yeah. me- medical team do check on it and say she's fine. Yeah. Uh, after it, it, I felt like that kind of halted the momentum of the match a bit. If it was like a worked angle, it, a little bit. It, it sort yeah, it sort of like made the ending feel a little bit more abrupt. Um, hmm. Which was Aoife just desperately with the chair, like hitting Ginny across like the lower back and like the thigh with it. Um, she fucking went to town with it, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, just like kind of desperation, like hit, and then at one point she just launched the chair at Ginny and felt horrible. <laughs> uh, and then she hit some modified Penta driver onto the chair to win. That was fucking um, good. Yeah, really, really good match. As I say, this could have been a takeover match easily. Oh, this was uh, fucking quality. This had 20 it, minutes as well, man. Yeah. I, I think it absolutely deserved because this is like a feud that's sort of like, it, it's one of those things, isn't it, where we always kind of like shit on WWE's main roster and even NXT to a degree hmm. that they seem to not be able to put a feud on with two women that doesn't involve a belt. Yeah. Like they seem completely incapable of it. And this, this is kind of like the other side of the coin where it's like, well, you've literally got these two. 
Ginny cheated to beat her. That's all the story they need, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, the Ginny was like kind of like belittling her, cheated to beat her, and then he forgot her revenge. And it was basic storytelling, but it it worked, and we got some really good matches out of it. Yeah, this was it, absolute quality. So I wouldn't good. even be upset if they had the third match. No, I wouldn't. Like it, they, they, they've seemed to have really good chemistry together. Like a fool's count um, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And off the back of this, re- it makes sense if they were going to. Yeah. They have really good chemistry. And also, like, both of them aren't really doing anything at the moment. They do seem to be in a bit of a holding pattern, pattern in NXT UK. Mm. So, Which, ordinarily, you just think, well, they're going to be wasted. They're going to be in some nonsense because of what we watch on Raw or SmackDown and mm. sometimes on NXT. Um, but. With this, like it's treated like it's, as you say, they don't have to be anywhere near the title picture and they can still be as relevant. They can still have as compelling, important storylines and not be near the title picture. Yet, like when they do get put near that, it doesn't feel out of the ordinary because you've had all of this sort of build and you've watched them over the weeks and months sort of thing. So, yeah, it's very good. It's one thing they do very well on NXT UK. Yeah, I feel like um, this is kind of the beginning for Aoife to go off the makeup. Yeah. Very, very long term, obviously, because they were making a big deal of Aoife's only lost two matches. She's got her first but win back. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, he needs to get the second one. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, th- I thought it was a really good match. Um, very, very hard hitting. These two mm. not at all. No, not at all. And <laughs> I wouldn't be upset if we saw them again. Um. After this, we get Millie and Mako preparing to like go train a melt burst in and challenges Mako to a match. And Millie kind of says, well, we've got to go through me first. And it seems like we're getting Millie versus Mel, which... That'll be good. Absolutely. Speaking of hard hitting, that yeah. will fucking be hard hitting. They, um, love to, they love to hit people pretty fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we got a Ilya Dragunov uh, promo, obviously won the NXT UK title against Walter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, take over this past weekend and he's basically saying he's going to be a fighting champion and he's going to be he's now the guy to beat almost came across heelish i thought yeah i thought that as well shades of gray definitely yeah it was almost like he he had he had like a bit of a sort of crime boss vibe to him the way he was Mm. sat in the chair like going long live the sar it's a bit sinister i like it yeah i wouldn't be against seeing that illy is the eye of tayman Oh, sweet like, child of mine. Ilya just running a fucking faction with Tayman. Yeah. Also, speaking of Tayman, did you see that uh, that gif of Ilya versus Tayman from WXW that was doing the rounds? No. Oh, it's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Tayman does like a uh, handspring like thing against the ropes and Ilya like, follows him and just torpedo Moscow's him in the stomach. Oh, fuck And Tayman lands just on top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> It's so upsetting. It's like, oh no. Oh no, I don't like it. Um, can't remember who put it up. I'll have, I'll have a look. It was one of the gift things on Twitter. Um, <laughs> speaking of Tayman, a man who's been feuding with uh, Oliver Carter is up against K- the scum of the earth. Scum of the earth. Kenny Williams next. Uh, I feel like this match, them putting like these two against each other was a bit of a sort of no-win scenario because both guys kind of need the win. Mm. and it, obviously Oliver's the guy who's, who lost the match but and it didn't hurt him too much because he's the dominant tag team guy but it's one of those things where they seem to be teasing towards a bit more with Oliver and Tayerman. yeah I think if Tayerman's first loss comes in this tournament it kind of hurts him oh yeah and, he's not lost yet has he yeah yeah and especially because they're making a big deal out of it later on in the show mm-hmm. Um. But that being said, uh, there's, there's still ways to do it. Yeah. Tayman could dethrone uh, Tyler Bateman and Oliver be his first opponent. It's good the, show. That side of the thing. Um, but yeah, so um, early in the match, round one, Kenny just keeps pulling Carter's hair to kind of derail Carter's momentum. Shitbag Carter, tactics. Yeah, Carter's <laughs> largely in control. I like the fact as well, like throughout the, like, the more that Kenny was doing, the more stuff Carter was getting. And it was like it was like mm. Kenny was trying to sort of get into his head, um, yeah. Play that more. He wasn't doing it so much to cheat. He was doing it more to like kind of play mind games with Oliver, mm. which it was 
was a really cool like little dynamic game. Um, yeah, yeah. I think at one point, I don't know if it's in the second or third round, but Carter turns around to him and just says like, "Provoke me, like I dare you." And it's it's playing into that yeah, whole thing it, where he's he's trying to push his buttons. It was the second or third round. Hmm. Um, yes. Uh, in fact, it was the third because it was just after Kenny had got the first pin. Damn. So in second round, there, uh, Kenny's a lot more vicious. He's working over Oliver's back and neck. Uh, he ties Carter's hair to the ropes and just stomps the shit out of him at one point. And then hits like a really like nice look on Yakuza kick. Um, and Sunset flips him out of nowhere, just get a one, uh, get his first points on the board. I, yeah. I like the me as well with the Heritage Cup rules matches. I think roll-ups are less sort of, it's a, le- a less of a lazier way, yeah. I guess, as we put it. Like, we, we complain about, obviously, um, in main roster, like, do roll-up, but we roll down, like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, it's nonsense. In, in this, in it, it makes a bit more sense. Yeah, because it's, it's almost like a momentum shift in the match. Like, because yeah. Kenny was very much, like, not in control for the first round, and then as soon as he gets that, that um, roll up, it's like, okay, the ball's in your court now, Kenny. Mm. Um, the third round, Kenny's just trying to evade Carter. Carter manages to cut him off, and then that's when he gets to his face and says, provoke me. That's it. Um, hits a couple of nice, re- really nice looking spin kicks and a dive over the top. Uh, meets Williams. Uh, Williams goes like a rebound lariat, and Carter just obliterates him with one of his own. <laughs> uh, and then hits a, there's a kick to uh, even the odds, 1-1. One, one. I love how uh, much more aggressive Carter was in this match. Like yeah. showed a, a very different side to him. It's almost like the team and feuds kind of like ignited something in him. Yeah, it's making mm-hmm. him a bit more vicious, and that maybe that's going to be the way Carter kind of like goes over to team and back. Yeah, because I think he's definitely going over it. Oh, I don't yeah, want to yeah. believe it, but I think he is. Get Oliver Carter and uh, Rowan Raja is like the tag team in the faction. <laughs> Ashton yeah. Smith can go be solo guy and like do Ashton Smith things. Going to tag with Rampage. Good tag with his dad, Rampage. Um, <laughs> his dad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, just I just I'm just liking this sort of new Oliver Carter again. Yeah, he's he's always impressed me, but he's like been, he's got that he's like, edge. Yeah, he's he's really upped it since he's come in this feud with Tim. Mm. Um, and yeah, round four, Carter fires up with with a couple of really nasty looking clotheslines. It's a beautiful acai moon, so um, yeah, bud. But then misses the scissor kick. Kenny takes out his knee and then just keeps going after it. Um, he distracts the ref by removing the turnbuckle pad, and as the ref's like, kind of like, it was quite clever because he he takes it and he literally throws it into the middle of the ring, so the ref sees it. Mm. And then he picks up his like the metal water bottle he's been drinking out of and just clocks uh, Carter with it. <laughs> uh, like the noise of that was horrible. Conk. <laughs> um, and picks up the win. Uh, very fun match. Was fun. Of course, Williams is going to win with shit bag, shit bag tactics. I, but it was I a was very gonna, clever way. I like that. I think the way that Williams cheated to have to like overcome Oliver Carter, it kind of it kept Oliver looking strong. That Williams had to re- had to resort to cheating to kind of yeah regain his advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting the next round though because Williams first star. William versus what? Sorry. Versus Noam Dar. Oh fuck it, isn't it? The Battle, so of, the Battle of Scotland. Yeah, that's that was the other reason why I thought oh, Oliver Carter is an absolute lock to go go the distance here because they're not going to put two F2. Scottish heels against each they're other. Not, yeah, they're not going to put two heels against each other anyway. But especially like two Scottish guys who are heels who are like basically similar gimmicks as well. Two top, top, top shit bags. Yeah, <laughs> and that, I can't that's fucking why it, wait for it. <laughs> Uh, they're gonna out I, shit bag each other. <laughs> I don't know who's gonna win that though. Like, that's no, the beauty of it, I suppose. God, I, I, I'd love no, to win that. You'd think so, but it feels like they're really getting behind Kenny with this, doesn't it? And it also, does. we've had we've had no one Darvis Tyler Bates already, like not that long ago. Yeah, but not in the Heritage Cup, was it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it was. Oh shit! No, of course it was. Of course it no was. No one contenders much. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I remember. Oh, okay. Oh, in that case, yeah, it'll be Kenny Williams. But then I still, I still think Tayman's going to uh, just obliterate Tyler Bates in the back after winning. It. Just do bad, bad things to him. <laughs> the horrible human being. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of people getting bad things done to them, we get then get Nina Samuels and 
I, I just love her. She's hilarious. She, she, this was so funny. It, her character work's just brilliant because she's not quite a heel like anymore, but she's still like she's still a heel. Yeah. She's kind of like the Baron Corbin of NXT UK, I think. <laughs> and actually the heel you just enjoy seeing like bad things happen to, but laughing at them for it. Yeah. Um <laughs> so she comes into the, a meeting with Sid Scarlet and she's like, everyone needs more Nina. And he and uh, he then says, Oh yeah, well uh, there's actually someone who who also wants a match, uh, Blair Davenport, and she's like Oh, Blair Davenport. Oh, that, 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 that's great. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> Blair Davenport. Such a good match that's going to be. And she just like shuts the door and screams. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant. She's like, she is like, uh, Aaron Sam Gradwell just like bullies from like Grange Hill or something. Yeah. <laughs> great. Um, we then get some more spooky bollocks. Isla Dawn doing witch things in the woods. Uh, she puts Danny Luna's hair in the box with Millie's watch. Um, still not quite sure what to make of this. I think the way that sh- it shot's very cool. Mm. I just think it's a bit like sort of it's a a little bit too out of the left field for what else is going on in NXT UK for me. Mm. NXT is pretty grounded for the most part. Yeah, and this, like you say, it does feel a little bit like pff, I don't know. They it's it's on the cusp because it's. It's something she pra- it's um what's it called? Not paganism. Wiccan. Wiccan. It, like that's that's her thing. And it's it's not like it's not like way out left field like Alexa Spooky Bollocks. Like this no, this no. is still within the realms that like I know I know what you mean. Like it it's but it's the, the close I, to being hokey. The way I look at it is that like you've got like not even hokey, I just think it feels out of place. Like you you have like like Lucha Underground is a good example where you know it's going to be absolutely batshit crazy. You, yeah. You expect people getting sacrificed to the gods and getting like their heads cut off with swords and Ray <laughs> Phoenix being a zombie. That's just going to happen. Um, but on NXT UK, where it's like there's like traditional wrestling show, mm. but then have like Isle of Dawn like doing all that and then like having the fucking light flickering and stuff like that. It, yeah, I see. It's a little bit like. It's it's like like turning on the news and having I don't know some like a fucking witch just show up and start reading the news. <laughs> you you wouldn't expect that, would you? It you you wouldn't you wouldn't it would feel out of place as the point. I don't know. It, it depends where in in the British Isles you are. Up Aaron's way, that might be pretty fucking normal. Oh, dude, the have Mystic Meg just looking at a crystal ball. <laughs> And now the horror Today, with well, Mystic well, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Weather forecast. Rain. Fucking rain. <laughs> the sky will be grey. <laughs> but no, I, I, I anyway, do get what you mean. I do get what you mean. Yeah, it does feel a bit out of place for me. Um, yeah. Like even, even when like, uh, obviously we've got so far I and mean, even like his spooky bollocks that he was sort of teasing. You've like reined it in a bit, and he's more like a crime boss. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Um, speaking of Taylor Man, uh, he says he's the man to beat in NXT UK. Uh, Fraser says that Sean's a chance to prove himself and prove that, like, why, like, he, why he should silence the doubters. Um, it's weird with Fraser, isn't it? He came in with a lot of fanfare. Yeah, it seems to really die down. And yeah, the. the I don't know. It's what, so they're not they, sure whether to pull the trigger on him. It's like they built up too too many people in the position they eventually see him going into, and so yeah. they couldn't just throw him straight in ahead of everyone else. And because there were so many people already in the shuffle, he's now nowhere near it, and he's lost any momentum. Yeah, he, he does vow to give Tayam on his first loss. Um, one thing that was interesting he was wearing an AJ Styles shirt, obviously. It was. A lot of comparisons between those two, even down to like move set. Uh, I, I, I feel like he's going to be the guy that eventually will be sort of in the AJ role in WWE. Yeah, um, he, he's too he's too good not to be. But then we've said that about so many people, mm. and you've just got to look at AJ Styles as a career t- trajectory where they wanted to put him in developmental. He ended up in TNA. They kept kept hesitating to pull the trigger on him, and next thing you know, it's like. We've got this limited time period of him, yeah, being at the top. So hopefully, at least WWE pull the finger out their ass on that one. 
Hopefully. He is only like 22, isn't he? So He's young, yeah. He's very, very young. Um, and yeah, that, that match will be next week, as will Blair Davenport versus Nina. And was there another one they announced? I feel mm. like. Amelia McKenzie versus Amel, is that next week as well? Possibly. I can't remember now. They, they made out that Tayaman and... Um, Tayaman and Fraser was, Fraser be, like, was next week. week. Yeah, that, they made out that was going to be like the main event match. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, we then get to the main event, which was Joe Coffey versus Rampage. Fucking hell. In a match that could only be won by KO or submission. I, Big, Ta- Big Tasty was fanning the bejesus out of his hustle arm. Oh, Big, <laughs> Big Tasty can't be here because he had to go out, out of being cute and buy a new one. Um, <laughs> so uh yeah the uh i like the fact that the ref was dressed like an mma ref he had like yeah. a black polo on he had the gloves they changed the ring as well it had black ropes and the turnbuckle has been taken off it had like the boxing style ones where it's just yeah. a flat pad yeah um i still think that they should have done this in the fight pit though i do yeah i agree i think it would have been awesome in the fight pit it would have been would have been but um, then there, there was one or two spots on the outside that we possibly wouldn't have got, but... Well, you say that. The Champa Thatcher one, they were brawling all over the place before they even got any. That's true. That's true. Um, Yeah, so both men um, grappling early on. Rampage gets the first couple of strikes off. Coffee replies with a few body blows. Um, this was just a hard-hitting slug back. Really, the- really, really hard-hitting. Um, Proper stiff. <laughs> yeah, we get a big brawl on the outside. Uh, they fight around the barricade there, area. Rampage just backdrops coffee over it and then clears it with a shoulder block, which was amazing. Like, yeah. the absolute height that Rampage got off that from like just standing position was ridiculous. Which is which is more than could be said for, for Joe Coffey, who, who caught his foot when he tried to do the same thing and almost fucked the dive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Brown goes after uh, Coffey's left hand and obviously the whole the whole like story goes like from this stem from Rampage breaking Joe Coffey's left hand in the first yeah. match, uh, and he goes he goes for like a, a few like modified arm bars on Coffey and Coffey like reverses, goes for a Boston Crab, uh, Rampage reverses into a Kamora attempt, and then Coffey transitions to another Boston Crab. Uh, after Rampage gets out of that, Coffey exposes the turnbuckle and throws Rampage into the corner chest first. Um, I love that, like the kind of the ebbs and flows of this. Like it started out like both of them just swinging fists and just trying to go, not necessarily for a knockout blow, but to try and grind the other guy down, like loads of body shots. And then when they realised that wasn't working, it was like, okay, we'll go to submissions now. So they exchange those couple of submissions, and then they go back up to a load of kind of brawling and heavy hitting stuff, but almost like going for the knockout blow rather than like grinding them down with body shots. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it was it was it was definitely sort of structured like an MMA fight. Mm. Well, as much as a, a wrestling match could be, like yeah, yeah there was yeah. a lot of sort of uh, different like changes of styles and stuff like that. Obviously, mm. we did get a brawl outside, which you wouldn't in an MMA fight, but there, there was like the whole <laughs> the whole like sort of trains um, trains submission attempts and stuff like that. It, yeah, it would go it would go into like that sort of like period, and then it go to more wrestling stuff again. Um, but yeah, a very cool and unique dynamic to the match. I thought mm. um, there was a bit where Rampage literally like yanked Coffee out the ring by his, his injured wrist, where he like he, he like sort of like climbed himself up the side of the apron, like he was like almost like he was a sort of like rock climbing up a wall or something. <laughs> just went and for then, a spot of bouldering. Yeah, and then <laughs> then just like sort of like yanked Coffee out the ring and flung himself to the floor. Mm. Um, both just landed nasty um, and then Rampage just drags uh, Coffee into the ring post repeatedly and swings the wrist against it as well um, both men trade suplexes in the ring trade blows again Rampage goes for an armbar fight and uh, Coffee fights out and hits the best moves out ever um, that was fucking awesome usually it's a cross body doesn't he off the yeah. top yeah uh, Coffee goes for it again after fighting out of a Dr. Bomb attempt, Rampage blocks it and hits a massive uh, backdrop driver off the top. Yeah. Um, 
And there's a really cool spot where they both kind of like leant against each other and like yeah, like back to back while they were sat down. It was just like, get up, both of us need to go. We need to finish this. Yeah, <laughs> and then Rampage gets up and helps Joe up. Yeah, and, like, yeah. He, he, like, like puts his him. thumb up. He's like, come on, get up. Yeah, he's holding him by the arm. Every time, like Joe sort of staggers, he grabs his arm and like keeps him standing, and then he puts the the fist up. Trade blows uh, for probably about a minute. It was wasn't it? Just oh yeah, just fucking each other. throwing everything. <laughs> um, Rampage hits a doctor bomb. Um, gets a load of right hands off on Coffee. Hits another doctor bomb, and then just hammer fists Coffee to knock him out. Yeah, and this was a um. I, I feel like they have to build one of these guys up freely, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's got to be the sort of end game here. Yeah. That one of these guys is going to be facing Ilya. I think first. off the back of this match as well, because you watch Ilya's matches, you watch Ilya's last two matches against Walter. They've not been a carbon copy of this, but you can see they were trying to kind of recreate that same just brutal been, kind of... Yeah, they've been very visceral. Yeah, yeah. And it, it makes perfect sense. Like if they're going to build someone up as a challenge, they need to show someone that can compete on that level of brutality. Yeah. And this this kind of matched that in a sense. And I think for me, I was thinking about this afterwards, and I was just like, "Fuck!" I was like, "You don't see matches like that on NXT UK unless it's Walter and Dragonoff." And we've only seen that twice. But then I thought, Do you know what? American fans would have watched Takeover, and they would have watched Dragonoff and and Walter and gone, "Fucking hell." Is that what they is that what NXT UK is about? Like we'll tune in. And you said before, like it will get eyes on NXT UK. You'll get a lot of like casual viewers or, or regular NXT viewers that will go over and watch it off the back of Walter Dragonov. So what better way to be like, okay, we're expecting some new some new watchers, some US watchers. Let's pretty much give them exactly what they saw with Walter Dragonov, but two different guys. And it kind of felt like that. It was like, well, let's put this on here and let's continue to sort of cement that. The whole show definitely felt like a showcase of what NXT UK is yeah. like. It's shown off the women's division, yeah. um, and in a, in like a as I say, a takeover worthy match. Yeah, it's shown off uh, just the heavyweights of Coffee and Rampage, and it yeah. also shown showcased the Heritage Cup side of it and the rounds exactly match. like a completely and different style of match. Yeah, it's all stuff that's really compelling and really different. Yeah, that NXT UK does from everything else WWE puts out. Mm. Like even NXT now doesn't feel like the same thing as NXT UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that, what, which is nice. Like this, there feels like there's a real difference between those now as well. It doesn't yeah. just feel like NXT UK is kind of like almost a developmental of NXT, which at, at one point it sort of felt like it was, and now yeah. it feels very different. It's its own beast. And I'm, I'm hoping as well with the um, the sort of the talk of like. Nick Khan uh, wanting to like completely revamp and rebrand NXT, hmm. and make it more of a developmental like thing, and place the build talent up. I'm hoping that this kind of like the the fans that are wanting what the old NXT was, kind of uh, realize, oh, we've got that in NXT UK, okay, okay. Yeah. and then puts more eyes on that. Yeah, as long as long as it keeps it under the radar from like <laughs> Mad Uncle <laughs> Vinny. Mad Uncle Vinny and Nick Khan, the fucking shitbag crime boss. Um, <laughs> as long as it, <laughs> as long as it yeah. keeps it away from those two dickheads, mm. uh, and you can kind of just have that be like the the fun but, uh, brand, so to speak. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But this, this was a really, really strong show, and it was. If, as as we say, if if this is like what they're kind of doing off the back of. Um, of uh, Watson Dragonoff too, mm. I, I think they're probably going to keep a few fans around. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Especially if it if it gets people going. Oh well, I'll I'll go back and watch a couple of like, like the build up maybe to Watson Dragonoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was the show. What were your highs and lows? Oh fuck it out! It's a tough call between that first match and that that last match. Both were outstanding. Um, I loved, I loved Rampage and Coffee, and but I knew I was going to love it. Whereas I wasn't sure. Like I thought Valkyrie and Ginny was going to be good. I didn't realize it was going to be as good as it was. So for that reason, I'll give it my high. Um, 
my low Isle of Dawn spooky nonsense. Yep. <laughs> if I'm being picky, like it wasn't bad. It just the thing is, we don't have to give a low. Like if there's not a definitive, if there's not a real low, like there yeah. wasn't a real low. I'm my, just still not really too sold on her spooky nonsense. So yeah, uh, my 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 thing with it is it just feels out of place. Yeah. It, it it does just feel like a little bit out of place and with whatever with like the way they present everything else yeah. where it's a bit more of a sort of like legitimate like well, almost it like it be like people they almost like it's an underground like fighting thing don't you yeah the UK yeah so for them to then sort of have that and then have, oh there's the witch in the woods <laughs> it, it's it we've, does we've just, got all this really nice traditional grounded wrestling I know oh, we've got a witch in the back as well what yeah yeah <laughs> it, it's it, it's just a bit a bit of a weird kind of juxtaposition between the two. Um, but yeah, that, that was my low. Uh, my high was also Eva versus Ginny. I thought it was excellent. Um, yeah. And the, the two, as I say, the two women who are really, really good at what they do. Mm-hmm. They've got really good chemistry together and it's nice to just see them putting, putting a feud where it's literally, as I say, it was as basic as I don't like you because you're different to me from, yeah. from Jin's point of view. Yeah. And then she doesn't like the whole like Valkyrie th- thing that Aoife's doing. And um, that he thinks that Aoife's like not on her level. And that's basically it. That's, that's the crux it, of the story. But it, it, doesn't it, just... need, it doesn't need the, like that. There's so many feuds in NXT UK where it doesn't really, really need the belt. That's what's like. Mm. That's what was quite cool about the way they built it because obviously Walter was like the attraction champion. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I don't think we'll have the same thing from Ilya. I think Ilya is going to be there a lot more frequently, but yeah, who knows? Um, but yeah, it, it was a, uh, it, it's good that they can, can kind of build storylines outside of the title pitches because it's one thing that's really kind of jaded on main roster at the moment is that if it's not involved in a title picture, they just don't give a shit mm. or they lose interest. Yeah. So, yeah, that's nice. Um, before we wrap this up, should we go to the old, uh, the mailbag mailbag? There's a couple in there, isn't there? There is. Go on, mate. There's a few. Um, should have had this open really, shouldn't I? Oh, I've got it. I've got it. Don't worry. <laughs> big, big tasty boy, uh, says, with a lot of original NXT UK contracts rumoured to be up this year, what do you see as the future for the brand? Will it suffer the same fate as NXT? Or will Johnny Saint be able to hide it from Mad Uncle Vinny on the balance sheet? <laughs> um, I hope everyone re-signs. I, I, I'm sure everyone will re-sign. I think a lot of the people there, like as us as fans are, are realising it's the best thing WWE are putting out. Like, and certainly for the the guys and gals that are in there, they must realize that. Um, It's interesting that, like, they've literally, it's almost like they put a bit of a renewed push to get eyes on the product, just as a lot of contracts are running down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's one of those things, obviously, with the pandemic, the downside on, like, the contracts are going to be something to sort of, some something to sort of like satiate, like satiate the um, need for money. With obviously a lot mm-hmm. of wrestling, clo- uh, wrestling promotions sort of only just coming back now. Yeah, but at the same time, and obviously tr- like global travel being the way it is, and even mm-hmm. travel around like the UK and Ireland being the yeah. way it is. Um, I well, I'm sure it will, but I I hope desperately that it stays as it is. Because it's it's great. I, I think it will. Um, I I know the fact that like as well. Uh, Meltzer said about when uh, they were talking about like the releases and that he he said that the reason NXT UK hasn't been affected is one because of like the UK like labour laws. They, they can't they can't just like cut people without like reason. Yeah. Other than, redundancies and then it, even then it's like a weird thing isn't it yeah yeah uh, and two it it literally the running cost of it and like the wages are that low that it's like 
in comparison to everything over in the states it's a pittance yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's like the running cost of nxt uk compared to the running cost of like even normal nxt yeah it's nothing yeah which makes me think maybe they might not bring it back on the road which is sad but i mean it well yeah that leads to the second question to be fair uh from big tasty says also uh will they ever return to shows in front of live fans if so when do you think that will be will there be another soft reboot perhaps uh ushered in by a takeover um i don't think we'll get another soft reboot i think their first event in front of fans will probably be a takeover and i think they are going to go back to fans i think they're gonna use the momentum they've built from walter Ilya hmm. and of like try and re get like a renewed interest in it so if they do tour they're gonna get the money's worth as opposed to like touring it and then having people be like well who are these guys yeah which you know what i think they should do no i think they should do should do they do a NXT? Do they do a NXT? Rarely tour it, have it in the same location, but have fans in and just pre-record it in the yep. one location. Treat it like they have the, like their full sale or CWC. Just have it at the BT Sports Studio or wherever it, it is that they, they make they, a permanent they, home. Have a word with TNT. See if they can get Hangar Thirty Four as the permanent <laughs> of NXT UK <laughs> <laughs> on your doorstep. That'd be handy. That'd be <laughs> yeah, I. I think they will go back. I, I keep adding them on Twitter and hey, asking I, what, why I can't I, be in the front row. <laughs> I, I'd get a train down to London once a month if it meant I would go and sit, sit I ringside would. and see you guys. Fuck yeah, absolutely. 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 Yeah, I'm. Um, it's disappointing watching it every week now and thinking, well, hang on, the world's, the world's open right back up. Like It's fucking Reading Festival this weekend. There's 100 plus thousand people in a field watching fucking Noel Gallagher. Why can't I be in a wrestling crowd with 200 people watching NXT UK? Well, you'll be, you'll be in a wrestling crowd tomorrow, Paul. Wow, I will. There's that. <laughs> but I want to be in the front not row. To, for not stuff not like, 200 people. <laughs> but I, I want to be in the front row for stuff like fucking Eva Valkyrie and Ginny and Coffee and Rampage and every other banger that they put on NXT UK week yeah. after week. Hey, Dan Maloney, NXT UK alumni, is on the show tomorrow. Yes, Dan Maloney. There is that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know who else is on the card because I haven't looked. But, <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, NXT UK. Uh, as always, thank you for listening to, to us. I know we we found out this on Discord. Like A lot of people kind of listen to us just to kind of hear our reactions and our rundown of the show. And that's very cool. However, if there's one show I'm going to turn around and say, you fucking have to go your way to watch every week the WWE, that WWE put out because obviously there's a lot of good wrestling at the moment. Hmm. Um, but if there's one WWE show you should you should make a bit of time for it is NXT UK because they're fucking killing it. One hour a week. Yeah, one hour, one a, hour week. a week. Do what, do what I used to do before we started like covering it properly and just put it up what I do when I'm not running an episode and just put it on while I'm eating my thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I did today. Had it on while I was eating my lunch. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But nice to have in the background, isn't it? I had to pause biting into my lunch to actually watch something because it was so compelling. Look at that. You never get between me Look and food, that. but this managed it. Look at that. <laughs> oh, Great. man. But yeah, thank you very much for uh, listening to us. If you want to be part of the conversation, you want to be part of the mailbag, uh, you can join our Discord server over Untitled Rest Pod. There is a link on our Twitter page, which is also Untitled Rest Pod. And um, we're on Facebook, Untitled Wrestling Podcast. Uh, Aaron puts daily on this day stuff on the Facebook and his own Twitter, which we then re retweet on our Twitter as well. Uh, so if you like our tidbits, that's another thing to look out for. And uh, while we're at it, um, Twitch as well. We do a lot of cool stuff on there. We're going to be doing some more cool stuff. Uh, some more different stuff as well uh, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, that yes, is boy. a rest pod on Twitch. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. And now a word from our sponsors. Do you like beer? Of course you do. Do you like wrestling? You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Check out topropebrewing.com, our very own Big Tasties brewery. They do a great deal of wrestling-themed beers, including Cold Stone Cream Austin Ice Cream Pale Ale and Papa Mango Mango Pale Ale also. They also do an array of T-shirts, masks, cans, and mini kegs. 
check out toproadbrewing.com or if you live in the Liverpool area, go to the Brew Tap in Bootle. And thatchface.com, where if you've got a minging beard, you can get beard balms, oils and grooming kits. They also do apparel. If you put whatever you want in your basket and then go, Aaron, where do you get your discount? You go into the promo code at the bottom, type in UWP20 for 20% off. And proceeds of your purchase do go to test out your cancer charities. You must love this podcast housing, the Untitled Wrestling Podcast housing.